um, see if we can crack on with this, principles of production. And I'm going to cut it. I mean, I'm going to face the same problem as Russ. There's too much to say. There is too much to say. But um, we'll do our best. So first of all, um, in your packs, there is a step-by-step -step guide that I uh, drew up. Um, it's basically giving you ideas for what you should be considering at each step of the production process. Things that you, should, you could do and you should, probably should do at some, at some stage. So it might be helpful to... It, it's designed as a tick box thing. So when, you're doing, when you've got a project, you take it and you go, right, I've done that, done that, done that. And it just makes things easier. Um, yeah, so it, if you can give feedback on that, that would be great because obviously I've put everything I could think of there's some things I've probably forgotten. Some things where you think, oh, I am not ever going to do that. You know, if you give me that kind of feedback, that would be brilliant. <laughs> anyway, so this, production, this um, presentation is designed around the steps. And along the way, I'm going to tell you, so give you some tips on what to do and what not to do. So that's how it's designed. So, of course, uh, let's see what, go, what happens. Well, first of all, we talked about it. Um, what, makes, what, is, what makes a good video? So I just wanted to ask you guys, what do you think makes a good video? Good sound, good sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that? <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah. Sound. But more. Get the donut there. Yeah. <laughs> good sound. Hmm? What's good sound? Clear. 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 You can hear it. I mean, it's basic. You can hear it. It's not. And it's not. And it's not too low, not too high, you know? You not can hear much going on. In the sound? Yeah. Yes. Anything else? What makes a good video? Interesting. Interesting, yes. Variety, so it's not, you know, if it's going on for a long time, you need a bit of kind of distract, you know. Yes, that's what makes it interesting. Just, yeah. yeah, variety. Different shots. Different people. That, yeah, that, different yeah. shots. Different people, yes. Relaxed tone of voice when the people are speaking. Yeah, relaxed tone of voice. I think uh, it depends, depends what it is as well. It needs yeah. to be not too long. Not too long. Yes, talking about length, God. Yeah, That's, yeah. People have done, they're doing um, some research into it now at, at edX. And I think some of you have probably picked up on that. Um, and th their current idea is that the ideal length for an educational video is six minutes. But then you go to TED, and they've done research, and they say 18 minutes. They don't let anyone talk for longer than 18 minutes. The difference is that TED presenters are charismatic. Uh-huh, yeah. 99% of lecturers are not. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> Length. Short. Short is a good thing to <coughs> live by. It is a good thing to live by. But, of course, it depends on the situation. It depends on what you're doing. It really does. And you do have, to some degrees, a captive audience. You know, most outsiders are not going to be watching a lecture video. But the students do because they have to. Might as well make it good so they don't fall asleep, but yes. <laughs> um, anything else makes you, makes it you good? and I were talking earlier in the break, and I think the human element. Human the, element. The, that was brilliant, yeah. What were you, you were saying about how um, if you don't have to be perfect and, it's br and it doesn't work if you're standing up there giving a perfect presentation, show your human side. Make mistakes, yeah? Start how you start. So how you the capture start, the, the start point. So the capturing of the attention, yeah, right? Um, I, I'm sorry if I've forgotten to write some things down. Capture attention at the beginning. All things I'm going to be covering. And ask you your opinions as well. Yep. Good. So the main things here, quality. That makes a good video. The sound quality, the picture quality. Um, the quality of what you're saying. The content. No one said anything about content. Mm -hmm. I was going to say an appropriate style, whether it's a mixture style. style or... Yeah. Being you have to clear about what it's for. Yes. And who your audience is. Your purpose. Um, and the content has to be good. You have to think about what you're actually saying. So that's to do with the purpose, isn't it? What am I making this video for? OK, so we've had a little bit of think about that. Quality, content, um, short. <laughs> <laughs> All the things I've written down here. <laughs> not only talking heads. Not only talking heads. Brilliant. So that makes it. More, we need something more interesting with more variety, different shots. And if you just have a talking head, you can't cut it. But we'll get to that later. Okay. Steaming and rolling on. This is what I want you to remember as we go through. Content is king. Quality is queen, and story is supreme. Okay. This is a good 
motto to live by when you're making video. And you can translate that however you want, but I'm giving you that now. So, first of all, how are we going to break down the barriers? What do you have to do? What kind of person do you have to be? Don't be lazy. If you're lazy, you're not going to engage, you're not going to get into it. Um, and that's not, I've been lazy. I'm so, I'm so lazy sometimes. I'm like, oh, I can just do it quickly. Never. Every time I do that, I'm, I'm, I mess it up and I have to do it again, or I make trouble for myself. If only I did it properly, I'd get it right. So, and practice. You just got to start, pick it up, try it, practice, don't give up, you'll get it. It's not hard, it's not rocket science. Plan as much as possible. A lot of video is about planning, it's about organisation. In anything you make, uh, writing a book the same, audio is the same, plan it. Share the burden, sharing is what we're all about, like, we like open education, right? Share the work, share your ideas. Um, get feedback as much as possible. Sharing is very important, but most important, more important than anything, has, does anyone know what kiss keep, means? Keep it simple, stupid. Yes, kiss. Remember to kiss, so keep it simple, stupid. I'm going to retranslate that into keep it short and simple, So, because we're not stupid. So, <laughs> right, I thought we'd go really quickly through the production roles, because this afternoon you're going to be taking on some production roles, because you'll be in groups and free, and you'll be juggling some of the roles. Now, um, a production could be massive. You could have hundreds of people on a crew. You could have hundreds of people trying to make a film. But you could also just have one person. So I just want to go through the basic uh, people that you do need on a production. <coughs> and that could just be one person. First of all, we've got the director. Now, the director is the creative. He's the storyteller. He's the one who's in charge of the story. So what they'll do is the director will research, they'll write the script if there's no script writer, um, they'll determine the aesthetics, um, they'll make sure when they're shooting that all the shots that are needed to tell the story are there, are taken, and they look good. Um, and you work with the actors and the presenters to make sure that they do, the good, do a good job. They ask the questions if you're interviewing, and they oversee the edit to make sure the story's told correctly. So they're the storyteller. Then you've got the producer. <laughs> the producer is the organiser. So there's, pro producers have pieces of paper flying out of their every orifice. Um, and that's why you've got lots of pieces of paper here, because I produced it. Um, they take care of the budget, the money. They take care of the contracts. They take care of the scheduling. Um, they make sure that all the creative people um, have space to create and don't have to think about legal stuff and all that money stuff and all of that. Uh, everyone overlooks producers, they're probably the most important person on a production, so some of you are going to be taking on a producer role. Um, then we have the cameraman. Now the cameraman is both technical and creative. They basically get the shots that the director wants on the day, um, but they help the director tell the story um, by deciding what to shoot. And the editor is, um, I mean, most editors don't actually look like that. <laughs> um, they usually spend a lot of time in a dark room. Um, editing is also a technical and creative skill. It's, um, it's ultimate storytelling. It's ultimate storytelling, making an edit. Um, so they're sitting in the room working with the director, deciding how to tell the story. Um, and... Yeah, they take care of the footage as well. They process all the footage and they export the final product. So you've actually got a file at the end to, to show people. So that's a quick overview of the different roles. And just to show you, I'm, I'm being <coughs> producery. Here's my credits for all those pictures. <coughs> the stages of production. Um, you've got lots of steps here, but there are four main stages. And I'm sure you know this. Pre-production, when you do your planning, um, and that takes a long time. And then you've got filming, production. And that's when you take, you know, when you film your shots or you record your voiceover, you do your interview. Um, then you've got post-production, which is when you put everything together. And then you've got distribution, which is what most people forget, uh, which is when you've got your little file. And what do you do with it then? You've got to do something, right? You distribute it. You make people, um, many people know about it, make people watch it. So those are the four steps. Now, someone asked um, before we came, how long do these things take? 
And um, I'm afraid to say that uh, it, it, how long is a piece of string? I, I don't know how long it takes. But this is a proportion of time that you should be spending on things. Um, as you can see, I put the idea in there. I haven't put distribution in there because distribution is, it, could la it lasts as long as your video product is available. Idea. You've got a spark of an idea. Then you've really got to work at it. That's pre-production. You've got to spend that much time, most, ha almost half the time, planning it, writing a script, doing all the work before you turn the camera on. Turning the camera on and filming doesn't take that much time. It shouldn't if you've planned it properly, you don't want to be wasting your time filming because it's expensive. It takes a lot of effort. You have to go to Glendur and take some shots, you know. It, it, it's, it's, um, it's the most expensive time in a production. Then you've got it all and you have to spend that much equal amount of time as pre-production on post, putting it together in the edit. Um, so I just wanted to give you that idea of the proportion of time <coughs> you should be spending. The amount of time you spend depends on the project. It just depends. It depends on you, how good you are, how experienced you are. Uh, it depends on how much time you have. So if someone wants a, a video in two weeks, you say, OK, I'll do it in two weeks, and you get what you get at the end of two weeks. If you've got it two years, you often spend two years doing it, fiddling with it all over the place. So that's um, slightly difficult to say how long it takes. Um, OK, the idea. The 1%. Genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration, right? We all know that quote. Um, you do need an idea. Of course you need an idea. You need a strong idea. And that idea can come from several different places. It can come with, often it comes from, oh, that's so cool, let's do that. Oh, lights, <laughs> camera, action. Um, that's great. That gives you the excitement to do something, but a better place for an idea to come from is a need. What do your students need? Um, if you're answering that, you're more likely to finish it. <laughs> so beyond, let's go beyond the 1% now. When you've had your idea, you really have to start interrogating the idea. You have to start asking yourself some questions. And we mentioned that just now. You've got to ask yourself, first of all, is, me, is it the right medium? Is video really what I should be doing, or do I just want to make a video? Maybe I should just write a blog article. Maybe I should just take a photo. Ask yourself, is, me, is video going to do the job I want it to do? What's the purpose of your video? What do you want to do with it? Why are you making it? And that obviously informs on what you want the video to say, on the content of the video. So my purpose is to... Um, introduce students, prepare students before my uh, lecture. And so the content will be an introduction to the lecture, of course. Um, who is the video for? Students, I guess. What kind of students? Is it just for students? Uh, you really have to think about your audience. Uh, because if you don't, you won't tone it right. You won't give them the right information in the right way. And how will you use the video? That means where you're going to put it. Who are you going to show it to? How are you going to show it? And, as Mary was talking about earlier, what job does it do? Uh, what kind of interaction does it get the students to involve themselves in? Is it asking them to uh, learn something that they have to answer a quiz on later? What does it do? How are you going to use it in your teaching? All of these questions are really complex and involved, but you, if you don't ask them, you're not going to get there. And what kind of video is it? That means uh, what kind of genre? Is it an interview, uh, a talking head? What kind of elements is it going to bring in? Do you want animation in it? Phew, you need to talk to Matt then. Um, do you want to just have uh, pretty pictures? What, it, what are the elements that are going to go together into your video? When you've interrogated your idea and you've, talk, you've thought about all of those things, you can go on to the next stage. <laughs> Steps, I told you. Developing your idea. Um, this is when you, you're not writing the script yet even. It's involved, isn't it? You have to think, you have to develop it and write a proposal. Now, I know that some of you, um, some of you uh, have a process for academics to apply for help with CADAN or uh, help from CADAN uh, or apply to make a video. Um, and it'd be useful to think about some of these things when 
when the academics are applying to make something. In fact, probably all of those things. Um, while you're developing your idea, the first thing to do is to research. You re I research everything I make. I look for references. I look for other videos that look like mine so I can copy them. We're all copying each other, that's fine. Don't copy it word for word, but the style, the ideas. I keep my references and I use them um, on my scripts. And it's just a way of communicating with people, this is what I want to do. And the topic, we made our Legria video and uh, we, I spent ages working out what Allegria did and looking at other Legria videos. I had to, otherwise I couldn't have made my video. Then you start thinking about what is the title, the topic, the purpose, the audience, the elements, the style. How long is it going to be? You've got to plan that. You've got to have an idea. When do you need it finished by? Probably one of the most important things. <laughs> oh, I need it finished by tomorrow. No, it's not going to happen. Where's it going? What equipment do you want to use? What people do you want to use? So share the burden. Get your friends involved. Really, it helps a lot. All of those things you should be thinking about and working out and writing down into what I call a proposal. So I am working on a, a kind of proposal document and you know, it might be useful as a reference point. Then on your proposal document, write a, a brief synopsis of, of the contents. You should know by now. That is your idea sorted. Write a script. That's the next step. <laughs> you have to write a script. Always write a script, even when you're doing uh, a documentary, even when you don't know what you're going to film. You have to plan for what you're going to film. You have to have an idea of what you're going to film. So when you're writing the script, you're thinking about the details. You're thinking about the exact structure, the exact contents, the words. If you're writing a voiceover, um, even if you're, writing, if you're doing interviews, what words do you want from these people? What do you want them to say? And then, obviously, it's video. You can't escape the visuals. You're, you're have, you have to think about what pictures you want just as much as you think about what words you want, what pictures are going to tell your story. Obviously, there's two main types of scripts that you'll write. One is fiction, which means anything that you're controlling. And one is not fiction, when you don't know what's going to happen in front of the camera. But that doesn't mean you don't control it. You are controlling it, even if you don't direct it. You're controlling it by choosing what to film. OK, so as I said, even if it's, if it's fiction, non-fiction, doesn't matter, always write a script. Make it as detailed as possible. Think of it as the blueprint, an architectural blueprint to your house. You wouldn't build a house without one. Don't make a video without one. But, having said all that, don't, don't feel straight jacketed by it. I write a script, I write all my ideas down, and I'm like, oh, I don't know anymore. And I stop, and I go, and I leave some of the creative process to the filming and to the editing. You can't, <coughs> you can't necessarily do it all. Okay. <sighs> How to write a good script? We've already said this. Start by grabbing their attention. How do you grab people's attention? Do something unexpected. Make a controversial yeah. statement. <laughs> make, yeah, make a controversial. Do something unexpected. Ask a question. Show them something really pretty that attracts their attracts them. I mean, you could you could. It's traditional to start a video with a wide to introduce the scene. You could start with a close up and and ask and get them asking a question about what that is. What is it? Um, use engaging words. Um, interesting words, interesting visuals, interesting sounds. What would engage you? What interests you? Use that. And then you use the interaction of those three things to tell the story. Keep it short, keep it simple. I'm always going to say that for everything. Um, your script should be as short as possible because your video is going to be short. Always keep your purpose in mind. What's it for? And don't forget some housekeeping. Now, what does that mean? Um, that means you're telling them what the video is about at the beginning. And at the end, you're telling them what to expect next or what to do next. But don't forget that because otherwise they have the people who are watching it don't know what it's for. They don't know what it's for. Uh, OK. Right. Here's the <coughs> script template. You've got a script template in your packs. It's really helpful. Um, the reason it's helpful is because it uh, breaks it down. 
You can write your words on this <coughs> side, on the narrative side, and then you have to think, what are the pictures with those words? Um, so it, gets you, it forces you to think visually, which most people don't, not in academia especially. We're all very verbal. Um, that will help you. And it also breaks it down into shots. So that's one shot, that's another shot, that's another shot. So you're breaking it down. What comes after what? What comes first, what comes next? It's very useful and, and I'll encourage you to use it um, this afternoon. Uh, this is basically what you're doing when you're making a, a, a video. You're telling a story visually and I just wanted to go through a few things while you're writing a script that will help you throughout the process. Tell a story. It doesn't matter what you're making. If you're just talking to your video, cam video camera on your computer, you still have to tell a story. Story comes first. What does that mean? It means that story is more important than anything else. It's more important than a beautiful shot. It's more important than quality. Um, the content comes, it, it, it comes first. The quality comes second. It's the queen, right? Um, everything you shoot has to have meaning in the story. Don't shoot a sunset if it doesn't tell me anything. I don't care if it's pretty. I don't care. I want to know what's happening. Um, so how do you tell a story? Um, how do you tell a story with pictures? First of all, you shoot the action. What's going on? It's the movies, right? Things have to move. Shoot action. Shoot sequences. Things happen. Yes? You don't need action. You can have a digital story which mm -hmm. involves stills. That makes if action you, in the you edit. Add, if you edit them, yeah. yeah, it makes action in the edit. And you have action as well when you're talking straight to, to camera in the movement of your face and in the words yeah, sure. that you're saying. So I'm just giving you some ideas about things that are good to do. So if you're shooting the action, that's going to work. That's going to be, that's an easy way to, to <coughs> make it interesting. And if you're shooting a process, a do, you know, something that's happening, you shoot a sequence, one thing after another. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. So um, knitting, there's a beginning, right? Lacing it onto the, and then there's the middle, and then there's the finished product. It's a process. Think, how are you going to cover that with your pictures? Um, beginnings and ends. So I've, I've seen so many times someone starting a video with someone walking away. What does that mean? Open things up. Open a book. Open a window. Show someone walking towards you. Think about that. And in the end, close it up. Connecting shots. This is something that most, even really good cameramen don't do. It's, it's also about process. Um, I describe it in a way that comes from China, because I spent a long time in China. Rice, planting rice. So you plant rice in one field and it's very, very close together. Then you have to transplant it. So you take it out of the mud and then you throw it over to another field. No one films them throwing it over to the other field. But how do you know that there's two fields unless you film that? Do you know what I mean? That's what a connecting shot is. Um, and also, please think about your mood and your theme. Um, if you're trying to film, I mean, this is getting really arty, but it applies to everything. You're trying to film something moody, set the scene with a dark sky shot. But it applies to everything in a way. Think about it. Yeah, next. Camera angles. <laughs> this is how you tell your story. Camera angles is an important thing to use. There are, so, there are loads of different types of camera angles, especially if you're using GoPro or Allegria. You could do super wide, you could do aerial if you've got an aeroplane. <laughs> but the basic ones are the wide, the medium and the close. What do they do? They tell you different things. The wide <coughs> is an introduction. It sets the scene. The medium, what does the medium do? Action. It shows the action. And the close shows the, the detail. detail. It's the detail. Use those three things and you've got a video already. Ah, so, visual th ah, storyboard. Um, if you want, if it helps you, if you're a visual person, go ahead and do a storyboard for your video. Draw it out. One shot at a time. 
this, this is a great storyboard. Matt did it for one of his animations. And um, it's great. I've never done a storyboard. <laughs> I write it out. I can't do storyboard for video. But if you're doing an animation that <coughs> takes a lot of effort, every single shot takes effort, do a storyboard. If you're doing a feature film, do a storyboard. If you're very, very visual, I'm more like verbal, do a storyboard. <coughs> ah, easy ways to make it interesting, apart from shooting action. Shoot people, make it human, uh, get a good variety of shots, <coughs> the why, the medium, all of those things. Um, add some money shots. Actually, it's not that hard. You don't need an aeroplane. Add a time lapse. It's actually that, not that hard. Um, you just, you know, understand a few things about time lapse, press go, bit. That will help you. Um, but please don't add a time lapse unless it helps you tell your story. Um, consider using found footage. Bit of a minefield, but it actually can add quite a bit to your production if you can be, if you can be bothered to do it. So, uh, <coughs> this is a particular skill. If you're doing a voiceover, if you're writing a voiceover, you don't always have to write it, and I'll talk about it in a minute. If you're writing a voiceover that you're recording and they don't see you, um, write it carefully. One of the main things um, is make it short. The sentences have to be short, otherwise you won't be able to say them. I got a script from an academic recently that was written like an academic paper would be written. He wants to read it out. And it's just not going to work. It's not. It's too long. He won't be able to breathe. Um, I wonder how long, much longer I've got. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to uh, just show you that and talk about a few, not, not talk about everything, but um, avoid repeating words. So when I say, say several times and I say I'm going to say sentence, it sounds ridiculous on recorded voice. So don't, you know, really avoid these repeated words. Um, and while you're writing it, mutter it out, you know, it's spoken. And then read it out loud, pr practice it, and then polish it. And that's how you, you get a good script for recorded voice. Uh, next. It's not working. Go, go, go. Aha. Um, a piece to camera. Now, that's when you're speaking to the camera as a, as a presenter would. Um, it's different from a recorded voiceover <coughs> because you're there. You have to talk. You have to act. Um, I was talking to Clive just now, and he was saying how he doesn't write his, his scripts because then he would, it, it, would, it doesn't work so well. That is a good approach. I would say plan it out. I would say, think about what you want to say and think about the salient words that you want to use. But it might work better for you if you don't. You just say. You just speak. Um, and you really should, if you're outside and you're trying to show people something, as an academic, it might be on a field trip. Use some interaction with the environment. You know? Look at this amazing rock formation. Isn't it great? It, it just brings you there. It makes it better. <laughs> um, Next. Okay, you've written your script, you've maybe done a storyboard. Write a shot list. <laughs> um, take your script, what shots do I need? Write them out. It's like a shopping list for your cameraman. It's a shopping list. This is the location I'm going to take, this shot, this shot, and this shot. Um, when you're doing that, think about additional shots that you could get that might help you. Extra shots, B roll as opposed to A roll. They're really, really useful when you're editing. Ah, all these steps in pre-production, I told you. <laughs> it's not going to take long to go through filming. Write your interview questions. You've got to think about it before you go into an interview, surely, right? You've got to think about it. Um, think about what you want them to say and design your questions based on that. Don't ask yes, no questions. So don't say, um, did you go to the shops? Yes. Say, tell me about your trip to the shops. It's different. Um, obviously, take into account who you're interviewing. And warm them up a bit. Ask some unimportant questions first. And then think of different ways to ask, because you might not get what you want first time. 
Aha, we're almost there. <laughs> this is the other things that a producer does before um, they go out to shoot. They schedule it. You've got to plan it, right? Get the props ready. <coughs> think about your clothing, what you're going to wear. Um, get your shooting equipment out. Um, do a risk assessment. So risk assessment is a legal thing that we really have to do, really should do. Um, we did one for this workshop um, to cover all of your productions, so you don't have to do one. But when you're doing one, you sh when you're doing your own productions, you're going to do a risk assessment. And I'm, we're working on a, a CAD-on, OK, risk assessment document, which we can share with you. So watch this space. So something useful to have. Ah... Make sure you charge your batteries, all right? It's basic stuff, but how many times have you taken a camera out and it doesn't work because you haven't charged your batteries? Practice using your equipment the night before. Professional cameramen do this every time they go out to shoot. They need to know their camera. Um, get a pen, a notepad. Really, you need it. And uh, release forms. Okay, so release forms is another legal thing which you really should do. And that's uh, giving, if you film someone, an interview of someone, you have written um, <coughs> proof that they agreed to appearing in your, in your video. They give you the rights to their image. So we've got one of those and we're working on, uh, I'm working on it uh, as well. Filming! Okay, so filming is zen. The best cameramen I know are very, very zen. What does that mean? It means that they're really calm and still and they're intently focused. Um, they know what's going on around them, but they don't go like this. They stay focused. Some of them are so in the zone that they know what's going to happen next, so they don't have to go like this. They know. It's a meditation. How to be Zen? Look. Look around you, know what's going on. Watch what you're shooting before you shoot it. What's going on? And then when you're shooting, look down, look up. What are you shooting? Is it in there? Is it in your screen? Move. This is about being lazy uh, again. Like, if you want to get a shot of whales that illustrates whales, maybe you have to go to Snowdonia to get it. If I want to shoot, if I want to shoot you, I have to move to get a nice shot of you. That's what I mean by move. But then don't move. I've got my shot, and I'm not going to move because I want that shot. And I'm not going to fiddle with the camera. That is the biggest rookie mistake. Fiddling with the camera in the middle of a shot, moving all the time, not giving uh, enough time to shoot things properly. Use a tripod. Please use a tripod. I don't care what Russ said. Don't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you, using a tripod is the easiest way to make your videos look better. It's easier. And one good thing about the tripod, it slows you down. And that's good because it makes you think. So that's why I always say use a tripod. <coughs> Even though I'm sometimes saying it myself. But anyway, one shot <coughs> at a time. I've got this shot. I'm going to give it the time I want, it's on my tripod. Now I'm, gonna, I'm looking around while I'm taking it, looking down. What's next? A shot of Mary! And then I'm going to go and shoot Mary. So it's one shot at a time, I give it time. Keep it clear and simple. I, I don't have time to show you this, but I really wanted to. Um, I, was, I found this footage of a guy, who, a news cameraman, who does a lot of in, um, pieces to camera with a journalist, and um, he was in Sudan with all these starving people, right? This white man, starving people. The cameraman goes like this, all the way around, the starving people. And, the, and there's the man who's speaking. It was just too much. It was way not clear. It was just didn't work because he was trying to do too much. Keep it simple, right? And review your work. <coughs> You've shot it, watch it. It doesn't matter what it is, because you can do it again, right? You can. Watch it and learn, and learn from your mistakes. Oh, dear. Shoot for the edit. That's something that people always say. The best cameramen are the cameramen that edit. 
if a cameraman says to me, I don't like editing, they're out. <laughs> um, how do you shoot for the edit? Tell a story, all the things I said before about visual storytelling. Make each shot long enough, 10 seconds long, at least, everything. Give them handles, what does that mean? There's a bit at the beginning mm -hmm. and a bit at the end that allows the editor to decide uh, where to cut. So you just make it longer than you think, longer than you think. Don't move all the time, shoot a lot of B-rolls, shoot a lot of extra shots. Okay, so my main shot is an interview with you and then I'm going to shoot lots of other shots to cover that up, like a wide, I'm going to shoot, maybe your hands writing, maybe your eyes looking shifty, or not really. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe even the view outside the window, because we're in this room, right? Lots of different other shots. Uh, don't worry about mistakes. I'm skipping a bit. <laughs> if you, uh, don't worry about mistakes, because you know what? Actually, mistakes sometimes are really useful. But then please don't leave the camera running for half an hour and just shoot someone's foot because you forgot. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> and it wastes time, it really does. Um, just going to say something about continuity. That's about the connecting shots I told you about. If so, it's the hat rule. If someone's got a hat on in one scene and then he's got a hat off in the next scene, it's, it's weird, it doesn't work. Unless you shoot him taking his hat off. That's the hat rule. That's continuity. Okay. Huh. Oh, I was going to do it on the board. Quickly. <laughs> Should have done this. 180 degree rule. <sighs> I'll do it kind of vaguely here. Okay. Ooh, blood. Extra prop. That was weird. It's, they're all bleeding. <laughs> oh, it's the heat, I think. That's, there's a line. Of, this is the li line of action. Um, these are two people talking. That's Edna. That's Joe. Edna's got long hair. Basically, don't go over that line. If you're shooting here, stay here. If you go over the line, it's going to look wrong. It, it will, the direction will change, okay? So it will change from being Edna's on this side. If you shoot on that side, she's going to be on the wrong side. Okay? Does that make any sense? Yes. A little bit, okay. That's 180 degrees rule. 180 degrees. And another really good rule. <laughs> Loads of rules. 30 degree rule. That means don't make any shot too similar. Make it at least 30 degrees different. Uh, and that just makes it easier to edit. Does that make sense? Yeah. <sighs> Composing your shot. Um, this is called the rule of thirds. <laughs> All these things help you shoot better. They really do. The screen uh, divides into threes that way and threes down. If you're shooting an interview, don't put the interview right in the middle because it looks bad. It just looks bad. Put them on the edge, like that, and they've got direction. The way, they've got a, a, a way that they're looking. It, it makes your composition much more dynamic um, and it tells you so much more. People are going to grow, right? Try and use the manual settings because you'll do it better than the camera will. I promise you, you will. Now, the reason I say try and use manual settings is because if you're shooting something and it's in automatic, the camera, while you're shooting, will start making changes. And that distracts. That leads away from uh, suspension of disbelief, which Russ was talking about. So, for instance, if you have... If you don't set your, manual, your focus manually, the camera might get confused uh, by a bit of smoke. Oh no, I wanted to focus on them, but I'm smoking, focusing on the smoke. Or if you're filming something and then someone walks past your lens, the camera will go, <laughs> can't work it out, if you haven't set your manual focus. 
Same with white balance. <laughs> okay, so white balance is the colour of your shop. <clears throat> um, light comes in lots of different colours. You don't notice because your eyes adjust. The camera doesn't. It can't adjust just like that. So you could say, it doesn't matter, does it? Because when I look at the video, my eye will adjust to the video anyway. It's true, it will, but not if you're cutting different shots together. Because if you do cut them together, you'll see that that shot's green and that shot's blue and that shot is orange. And it, it looks bad, okay? This is not hard, <laughs> setting a white balance. It really isn't hard. Do it and you're safe. Just do it at the beginning. You don't have to do anything else. <sighs> and also setting your exposure. Now, exposure is a thing that changes the most quickly if it's an automatic. Anything you do, any movement you make, it'll change. Um, and uh, the camera gets confused. It looks crazy, it looks, it looks bad. If you set your exposure, <coughs> it'll look better. It'll look better. Um, this is my garden. <laughs> it's not much of a garden, but that's obviously overexposed, right? You can't, it's, it's all blown out, you can't see anything. That's underexposed, you can't see anything. It has to be somewhere in between. Yeah? Skipping through it all. <coughs> okay. Recording good audio, audio as, as Russ said, is really, really important. Um, obviously, you have to use, if you want to get good audio, use a good mic. Um, set your audio levels manually. Listen to it. Make sure it's not too loud and not too low. And you're listening to it at the same time you're trying to listen for any problems. Um, so if suddenly there's a lot of noise, you have to say, I didn't get that because I couldn't hear it because we picked up other noise. So one of your jobs when you're shooting is to stop the noise. So if you're recording any type of voice, I'm sure when you go into your sitting room, you make sure it's quiet. Any type of interview, make sure you're going to a quiet place, that you're not going to get someone banging the door. Um, control that sound as much as possible and, uh, and monitor it so that you know what sounds you're listening to. Put the mic, Russ has already said this, put the mic close to the source. You're talking? That's close. Don't but, 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 don't put it in the shot. I don't want to see the mic. So many times I've seen this hanging around at the top of a screen, on a film as well, on a proper production. <laughs> it, it's, um, it's one of the fun things to spot if you're watching a film. Um, one thing that I, I really think is important is that you record not just voice, but just, just silence. So in an interview, if you record the, the sound of the room, you've got something that you can use to fix problems in the edit. Because every place has a sound. This sound in here is like... It's a low-level white noise. Um, and you can record other things that will tell your story, like the sound of a river. Uh, without the pictures, just the sound tells a story. Whew, good audio. The voiceover. Um, you've written your script out read it out loud, mark where you want to breathe, work out how to say difficult words. If you see in a word that you have no idea how to pronounce, go to the internet and find out. The BBC is quite helpful with that. Although, they're rubbish at Welsh names. <coughs> um, pronunciation. Uh, you have to work things out and speak very slowly and clearly but with energy. Drink some water so you don't go like that the whole time. And with a voiceover, you can record it as many times as you want to get it right. And then you edit it down. So, excuse me. Aha, interactive bit. How to set up an interview. Because anyone want to come and sit up here? Come on, Lauren. <laughs> she looks shocked. <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you. Well, I've got to get this right. 
Okay, so I want you to look like her. I mean, it's going to be a bit, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, forget the couch, just her. She's looking, what's the direction she's looking in? That way. She, she's looking in that way. She's got space here. Okay? You are going to look at the interviewer, and I'm the interviewer. So you sit there, I'm going to sit kind of here, and I keep the camera as close to me as possible um, so that her eye line is just off the camera just off. Don't look into the camera because then you're presenting, you're talking directly to the audience. Talk just off the camera and I've still got engagement. If you're talking that way, I have no idea who you're talking to. If you're looking just off, I know you're talking to me, but not to me. <laughs> so I'm going to sit there and I sit right here and I go like this. I ask my questions, I look at her, and what am I not doing? Speaking. <laughs> it's really, really difficult to master that because people just, without thinking, go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm, that's really, mm. you've got to go like this and look at your interviewee. Um, and if you just, it's really simple. There, I've got it, I've got it, I've got that, exactly that. Almost. <laughs> with a bit of lighting, with a nice camp, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Um, talk a bit more about how to set up an interview. Can, can I ask? Yes. You were doing noddies there, weren't you? Um, I was doing noddies, but a noddy mm. is television talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say, do you, do you, would you use noddies? I hate noddies. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't use... A noddy is... So, so I'm filming an interviewee, and then, afterwards, you turn the camera around and you film... Mm the interviewer going, that's so interesting. And, and you use that as B-roll to cut up your edit. So I would always say, don't include the interviewer in, in the shot. But sometimes you do. I mean, that's maybe the only thing you've got. So do noddies. <laughs> I don't like them. Um, yeah, I was doing a noddy. <laughs> Um, so some of the things here I've just talked about with that picture, um, the eye line, not down, not up, straight, <coughs> okay, looking just off camera. Choose a background that fits the interviewee. It, it's nice, you know, you've got an academic and he's sitting in his office, it's nice. Um, but keep him away from his books so you can't read the titles. Um, don't make it distracting. Tidy it. Tidy the office. This is called set dressing. Really do it. it, it it's worth it. Otherwise, it looks bad. Make the, make the scene look pretty. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you something. This is an interview that we, we did of an academic here. Now, the one thing that... There, there are a few things wrong with this, but there's one thing that really got to me. Can anyone tell me... <laughs> What do you think really got to me? The black hoodie on his t-shirt. Well, it's a t-shirt actually that really got to me. It was a t-shirt because um, it's, it's really distracting because I can read the writing and I keep looking at it and wondering what it is instead of listening to what he's saying. So if he had worn a suit or something tidy, just, just nondescript, a t-shirt without anything on it, I would have listened to what he said. Clothing is really, really important. Another thing that's important about clothing is um, this. I wonder if you can see it from where you... It's called moiré. Mm. So you see it, I see it in my eyes when I'm looking at your, your top, actually. My eyes start going like that because my eyes are a bit old. So I'm going like that. Um, you can see it a little bit. Um, it's, it's, it's interference in the shot from, from lines. So your shirt would be a nightmare on on a screen. So plain, simple, smart. So I'm not in the video this afternoon. Uh, it yeah, you might have to be the director. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Um, be an example of what, what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> so an example of what to wear would, would be what you're wearing, which is simple and black, and you've got a nice jewellery there. Looks nice, smart. Um, not to say that you're not all smart. <laughs> Just not smart on video. <laughs> um, another thing is, oh, I'm still learning how to be a presenter. When we did our Legria video, I was like, why didn't anyone tell me about my hair? 
I can't control my hair, but you've got to try and make it neat and then try and look, you know, okay and make sure your face isn't sweaty, you know? All of these things distract and they're easy to do, just got to take time to do it, you know? It's really easy, but get it right and then you've got a better video that people will want to watch. Ah. Hmm. These are some tips on what you do when you're in, inter in an interview situation. Um, we talked about that a little bit when I set up my interview, but, you know, make friends first. Tell them what you're going to be asking about. Um, get them to tell you your name, tell you their name and position and all that stuff on camera in case you forget to write it down. You should write it down. Listen and respond to what they're saying. Don't always go right by your script. Um, and sometimes, you know, you don't have to say anything. That's the best interview technique of all of them. Just go. And what happens? Oh, I have to talk. Oh, I have to talk more. And then they say something really interesting. Mm -hmm. Don't ask a question. OK. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. One important thing. Don't interrupt the interviewer, uh, interviewee. You're not on Radio 4 arguing with a politician. You've got to let them speak. Um, okay. How to give a good interview? You did great because you looked at me. Look. Prepare. Think about what you're going to say. Um, take your time. This is like all the techniques that you use when you go for a job interview, right? It's, it, it's important to know because all the people, academics, have to be in front of the camera all the time. They answer questions from the media. You know, this is an important skill. Um, Sit still. Okay, sit still. Sit on a, on a simple chair. Don't sit on one of those ones that go swivel for swivel because you spend the whole time going like this <laughs> and then you look like an idiot. <laughs> um, think STAR. Has anyone heard of STAR? No. Um, STAR stands for situation, task, action and result. It's a way of explaining things. Someone asks you a question, you say, okay, I'm going to explain the situation. I'm going to say what the task was, what we were supposed to do. I'm going to say what I did, and I'm going to say the result. You're telling a little story with star. Um, and when you answer a question, it's really, really, really helpful if you paraphrase the question uh, in your answer. So they said, tell me about your trips to the shops. And you say, well, yes, my trips to the shops um, I was going to the shops on Tuesday and this is what happened. I set the scene. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm trying to do start. It's a great skill. Anyway, presenting. Um, looks, this is different from giving an interview. You've got to look directly at the camera, make a connection. Imagine that your camera is, is a colleague or a student and you're talking directly to them. Do all the same things you would do if you were in an interview. Be smart, don't wear a stripy top. Um, uh, don't overdo it. Just keep it really simple, you know. Um, and if you want to do anything really swish, like a move, I saw one of those. People do want to do moves. I was watching a video from the University of Nottingham, and there was an academic introducing her course. They didn't set the exposure. Um, she was saying it was dreadful. She was saying. <laughs> This is my wonderful course, and if you want to come to my course, come with me. And she turned, and they cut away. Swish. See? <laughs> You've got to choreograph these things and think about it beforehand. Um, and then, watch yourself. It's only by me watching my Legria video that I learned how messy my hair is. I mm -hmm. thought it was really neat. Not really. Ah. I've got about ten minutes left, I know that. And I've got about ten minutes to talk. Here we go. Things to remember when you're shooting. Watch what you're shooting all the time, just, just after shooting it or at the end of the day. Watch it, then you know what else you have to shoot. And then you know what mistakes you're making. Then you know if there's a problem that your camera's actually broken, hasn't recorded anything the whole day. So <laughs> regularly, this is safety, regularly put your footage onto your computer and back it up. I always say back it up. I'm pretty safety conscious. 
That means making another copy onto another hard disk somewhere else, an external one. <laughs> Remember to write down names, positions, all of those things, contact details of everyone you talk to, because you're bound <coughs> to want to know and you're going to be bound to forget when you're editing. Uh, release forms, you should sign them. It makes it legal, it's important. And look after your equipment. That means, oh, you know what, if you want to shoot, and you're all over the place and you've got your camera there and your headphones are there. It's so easy to just leave it lying around and to lose it and to forget. And then you forget to charge your battery and the next day you can't... If you're shooting over two days, as I'm sure most people aren't, you can't shoot. Anyway, just look after it. Hey, post-production! This is my favourite bit. <laughs> I like post-production. Um, the key to post-production is organisation. That's... That's really it, you know. Make sure everything um, is organised. You know everything is. Um, you do need a lot of storage space for footage. You do, in general, unless you're making really, really basic, really small things. So you've got to think about that. Make a plan. Where are you going to put it? Um, store your footage in separate folders per project. You know, you might be doing one, only one project in the year, but next year you might make another one. Put them in the same place and date them. Give them a name. You know where they are. They're always going to be there. Um, now, why have I put this in red? Oops. I put it in red because I wanted to check it. Um, one of the things that I think is good practice is you don't copy clips from your camera. You copy the entire folder structure. Um, from your camera, from your card. And that's just a safety mechanism in case you end up on an editing software that suddenly needs one of these little files that you completely ignored. Copy the whole structure, just leave it there. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean when I say the whole structure, the whole filing structure? Mm -hmm. Well, when you take a picture on your camera, on your DSLR, um, it's going to make lots of little files and uh, one of the files will have the actual picture in, and the other files will have like information um, files in. Get it all. And then, and Russ, yes. if you want to delete the footage from, from your camera, from yes. your card, is the best thing to do, reset it. Reset the, format it. There's normally a format option in each camera. Is that the best thing to do, do you think? Depends. Depends. Because if, so if, if you format it in that camera, and then put it into another camera, with a different file structure, and that can cause problems, but it can create more file structures. So, it depends on what you're recording on. If you're recording onto an SD card and you're switching it between different cameras, then, or just delete it in the computer. Just delete everything. Yeah, get rid of it. And then, if you delete it in the computer, the camera, once you put it in and start taking photos or video or something, it will create the new file structure, depending on like, as determined by that camera. So, it's not something I would worry too much about. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, one thing you should do, please do, always check that you've copied everything over. And that means you can, the easy way to do it is to check the size. The size of the, ma of the main folder on your camera, the size of the folder on your computer. Same size? Got it. Okay. Just, just so you know, you're really lucky. You're lucky to have Premiere and Wii Video. Because that means, it means that you don't have to format your footage. Most footage you don't have to format anymore because you've got Wii Video and it will accept most things. Whereas in the old days, when everyone was using Final Cut, you have to format, you have to process every single clip for Final Cut to recognise it. So you're lucky! <laughs> so this is also about organisation. It's folders, um, making sure everything's ordered and in your project as well. I'll show you what I do in Premiere. I set everything, I, this is what I do, and everything goes in a folder, I know where it is. Foldering, organisation, important. Here's another red one. Um, it's not red for any reason, don't worry about it. <laughs> when you edit, you have to set up your project, um, and then you've got to import your media into the project. We're going to do that this afternoon with Wii Video. Every single editing software is going to be the same, Oh, you have to set up a project, create a project, and then import all your media. Okay. 
This is how you edit. I've got two minutes. <laughs> this is how you edit. First of all, watch what you've got. If you need to edit, you, sometimes you don't need to edit. You've just recorded a voiceover and that's, or a, a piece to camera and that's it. But if you do have more than that, watch it all. Know what it is. Listen to all the interviews. You know, when I first started out, I used to write everything down. That's how I logged it, that's how I recorded it. It's a bit painstaking, but I knew it was there, so editing was really easy. Um, I usually start stretching my story with a voice, with, this, with the voice, the voiceover or the interview. And that's just telling the story, you know, so I cut that down first. I listen to it, I say, that bit's rubbish, that bit's good. That bit's good, and then I choose, and then I go back and choose which ones work the best. Um, you can refer to your script, that's what it's there for. <coughs> but don't be bound by it, because you can't change it now. You've got everything. You have to be bound by what you actually got. Um, once you've cut down, and editing is about cutting, whittling away, like you're sculpting a piece of wood. Think of editing as, as sculpture. You're not just whittling down, you're also building up. So you're building a model out of matchsticks and you're whittling down a big chunk of wood, both of those things. So you're whittling down your voiceover, getting the good bits, it makes sense, you're putting it together and then you can start putting the pictures on top. Um, I know, because you said that you all understand what a, sequ a sequence is, and how a timeline works. But basically, it's linear. It works, it's time based. It starts here at zero seconds, it goes one, two, three, four, 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 four like that. Um, but it also works in, in layers. Um, there are two, first of all, there are two halves pictures and audio, layers, one layer, two layers. Mm. You understand that, I, I'm, I, I think, right? Okay, good. What do you do in the middle of your edit? Make things flow. Nothing should jar. If you're watching and it goes like this in your eyes, it's wrong. Cover up your cuts. Please don't show me a jump cut. That, it's not hard to cover that up. You've got an interview, there's one good bit, another good bit, you cut it and it goes like this in the middle. That's a jump cut. Put your B-roll over it, cover it up so that you don't see the jump. You see their hands, or the noddy. Sorry, mm. B-roll, can you explain? You Sorry. quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, oh. A-roll is your main footage, like the interview, yeah. and the B-roll is the secondary footage. Okay. Uh, so the other shots that you get, like um, if I'm doing the interview with her and then um, to cover it up, I take some shots of her hands writing or, or a shot of the whole room. That's the B roll. So, would you use a, a transition as well, a fade out, fade in transition? Ah, uh, I'm going to talk about transitions. I would, yeah, oh. don't, I would say don't use transitions between shots. That means if you've got two shots together and you do a, um, a, a transition between them so that the two fade in together like this, um, you're doing something wrong if you have to do that. You're doing something wrong in your edit if you have to do that. It looks cheap. Because you haven't shot your B-roll, you haven't done what you're supposed to do beforehand. Um, one way that people do do it is they fade quickly to white mm. and they make a kind of a flash, a flash cut. So it's kind of like a zoom, and then you're on to the next shot. That's a way of, if you haven't got any other option of doing it. Or you could fade out to black, leave it for a bit, then fade in again. So I would say always use fading in and fading out to black. And that's, 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 that's fine. But between, it doesn't look good. I would also say um, use, well, you should use transitions on your audio cuts. So there's always going to be like a quick transition that you can grab off that's already prepared for you in the editing software. You put it between the two shots, listen to it. Oh, it sounds a bit smoother. Make sure you can't hear then the two voices merging. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> when you're editing, every editor watches what they're doing over and over and over again. They watch the whole thing and they watch little bits. 
So I'm going to just be roll. Yeah. Um, be you're doing a jump cut, presumably between you know the two bits that you want and, and your bit from bit of hands moving. Mm -hmm. That's a jump cut between those, is it? No, a jump cut would be if I've just got one shot yeah. of the interview, and they say one good bit here, yeah. and then they say another good, big good bit later, and I cut out the middle in the the bit in the middle, oh, and right, then I okay. put the two shots together. It's the same shot, but there's a little there's always going to be some movement. So when you pass from one to the other when you're watching it, it goes like this. Okay. It looks like a jump. It doesn't look like a natural... Um, so, so what, do you just stop, you know, you've got person talking, two bits that you want to keep, and you want to go from one to the other. Uh, how do you get, do you just, do you just cut in the, the hands moving? Um, you would put, you would go back to the levels here. Oh, there are the levels. Um, so, if that's a cut there, uh -huh. between an, in, uh, an interview, one yeah. person speaking, one bit, second bit, I'd use another shot to put it over there. I'd cover it up with the other shot so you don't see that jump. You see the other shot. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. 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 But there's, there's no transitions there. There's no fades. There's no fades. Yeah. You're just, just cutting yeah. to another shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that other shot has to help you tell the story as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's her hands writing because it's about her listening. Yeah. And writing. <laughs> and writing. Yeah. <sighs> there. At the end, when you've got your story, you fix it if you need to. And you add titles. And you add music if you've got about two days. <laughs> music is really difficult. I would say don't use music. Don't. It, it just adds so much time to the, you know, you have to listen to so many different types of music and why use it unless it's really, really going to help you tell the story. Um, mixing the audio means that you make sure that the levels um, are right. So there's not one thing that's too loud and one thing that's too quiet. If you've got music, it's quiet enough that you can still hear the words being said. That's mixing. Right, Matt? <laughs> oh, still images. Avoid it. I always say, don't use a still image, because you're, you're doing video, right? If you have to use a still image, make it move. Making it move is called a Ken Burns. Ooh. Video term. It means you're zooming into the picture or you're panning. Pan to something. Don't just randomly pan, pan to something. Do you know what a pan is, right? It's moving across like that. And a zoom is moving in. I'm zooming in on something. Poor Alicia's face. <laughs> and I'm panning to something. Your really interested face. <laughs> OK. OK, and then you've got to export. Ah, oh, Mary, you asked me for export settings. Yes, thank you. Whew. All editing software will provide you with presets. Use them. In Premiere, choose that preset. That's, that's a format. You'll get all of these things, but that's a format, but it actually is a codec. It gives you an MP4 file, and it gives you lots and lots of options. <coughs> so you choose that, and then it will say, where do you want it to go? Do you want to go to YouTube? Do you want to go to Vimeo? Do you want to go to Android phone? Um, it'll give you lots of choices. And here are, here are two I chose for you earlier. <laughs> um, this is a big one because the size of the frame is big. It makes a big file. This is a small one because the size of the frame is small and it makes a smaller file. But the quality is pretty much the same. If anyone wants to see, I've got some samples, but now everyone's hungry, so I'm not going <sighs> to. I'll give them to you later, Mary. Distribution. Export. Put it on YouTube. Everyone uses YouTube, right? Share it. Advertise. Tell people. Respond to the comments. That's how you get people involved, if you need to be. And, and this is really good practice for a lecturer. You know, if the lecturer says, set up a Facebook page, and then the lecturer is never on the Facebook page saying anything, 
Why should the students engage? And then think of other ways to use your video because you spent all this time making it. Don't waste it. OK. Phew. Copyright. Do you want to know? <laughs> Something to avoid it. Avoid it by making your own stuff. And then share it. Do your bit for society. Make it open. Give it a Creative Commons license. We've got stuff about, um, uh, about that here, if you want to pick it up. Infographics. Hmm, I thought we could think about how to cut the hassle. Do you know how, how to cut the hassle, the best way to do it? Get your students to do the filming. <laughs> you don't have to do it. <laughs> That's the easiest cheat. That's a cheat. <laughs> Can anyone think of any other cheats that I might not have thought of? No, I think maybe get your audio visual <laughs> student. No, OK. These are the top tips I want to leave you with. Keep it short. Write a script. Story, story, story. Use a tripod. Use a good mic. Try fiddling with the manual settings. Shoot for the edit, always. And keep your footage backed up and organised. These are the top tips. And there's one really important thing, which I haven't said. Trust your instincts. Trust yourself. You'll find out what to do. You'll do it right. After a few goes. OK, that's Have it. Have any examples of videos that you've done? You said about the Legria one that you've done. Or yeah. Or the ones would be really good to see. And um, the Legria. Example, or well, I'm going to show a little video that we did, which is our first video that we did. Um, I went to Glendur to film it. You haven't seen it. It hasn't been properly released yet because we're still waiting for one little credit. I'm going to show it to you. If that's OK. And I'll also say that it did take a lot of time. You don't have to do this. But I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show two examples of two. OK. Mm. I wonder if it will show up here. Ah. Magic. I don't know about the sound. See if this works. Sound? It doesn't start for me. The Greek historian Plutarch said that education is not the filling of a vessel, but rather the kindling of a flame. And that's really what we're trying to do here at the Canon Learning Portal. Kevin is a new regional project set in the heart of the <coughs> uh, linking the universities of Aberystwyth, Bangor, Blinder, Grootland of Fenanai, and the Open University in Wales. The main aim of the website is to inspire people into higher education by showcasing the educational opportunities that are out there. Um, one of the main ways we're going to do this is by promoting the creation of educational media. My name's Izzy, um, and I'm the Educational Media Producer for Kadai. One of my main jobs as a producer is to organise trainings for academics and staff who might want to make educational resources. So these trainings will educate people on how to use the kit that we provide, and talk to people about style, and give people ideas um, of ways they might want to use um, these resources. So the Canon Learning Portal has provided its partners with a wide variety of video, audio and photography equipment. Everything from a low-end Magria palm camcorder to lighting equipment, um, green screen, podcasters. Um, it's there so the staff can produce all sorts of different types of content. Uh, I'm only an animator. I'll be um, creating animations for staff, and I'm also going to be helping staff um, create their own animations and videos. Uh, animations can help to visualise processes that would other otherwise be very difficult to understand, such as uh, muscular systems, tectonic plate movement, things like that. So a video could be a recording of an event that's never going to happen again, or a document of research that happens in far off places, 
um, an audio recording could be used by a researcher to record um, a reflective journey. Um, a photo can be used to uh, get students asking questions. There's so many different ways of teaching, so many different ways that um, you can use media in education. It's really about inspiring students and about enhancing the learning experience. And it's about widening access, both geographically and intellectually. It's after it. <laughs> um, just quickly, um, I'll show you something simpler that you can do. If I can actually get to my... Um, aha! Make it work. No, don't. Tech support. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to show the... Um, Legria. Legria one. Okay, I'm going to find it first. You can always put it up on YouTube if you want to. Sorry? You can always run it up YouTube if you want to. That's what we're doing. Oh, well, right. I don't, I have, mm, didn't send it to me. <laughs> no. Where's the logo? Oh, I know, I've got it here somewhere. I'll show, I'll show it to you. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, technical difficulties. Oh, I wonder if this is the final. Okay, so this is actually... Um, it's, it's not quite finished, but I'll just show you a sample of what it is that we did um, with, for the Legria video. And it's online now, and we're going to send you guys the link and get your feedback. Hello, my name's Lizzie, and welcome to this Guess where we did it. <laughs> Today, we're going to be looking at the Canon Legria Mini. Um, now, I'm going to go through everything you need to know to use this camera. Um, I will mention a few technical things, but I'm not interested in getting under the bonnet. What I want to do is make sure that you have the confidence to pick this thing up and go out and shoot. So uh, to help you navigate this video, we've designed a few uh, chapped markers or chapped buttons. So if you want to skip forward or if you want to review something later, you can uh, use some of the buttons here beside me on the screen. Now there are buttons, is... there are buttons. We've added them in YouTube. It's really cool. <laughs> so, so basically this video is just one wide, one close. That's it, and we're putting them together. Simpler than the other one. <laughs> but it took a long time still, it's quite a long video. So we'll send you the link and you guys can watch it and please, please give you your feedback and tell us what we're doing wrong. Or what we're doing right. I'm sure some things are doing right. <laughs> okay, and it really is lunchtime, guys. It's, it's 20 past one. I'm so sorry. So when are we going to 